Oh, no espresso for me. No, why not? No, I already had some. <laughs> but sushi, sushi pop did me in. Yeah. Yeah. And those mini cupcakes. Dude. Shout out to Ayrton. Happy birthday. Um, it's his birthday, so we took him out. So it was, I guess, a cheat meal today. Yeah. Of sort, some sort. Um, cheat day. What is NIMBY? N-I-M-B-Y. Not in my backyard. <laughs> Not in my backyard. Mark Andreessen gives WeWork's Adam Newman $350 million to uh, solve the housing crisis. That's literally the headline. <laughs> to uh, uh or uh. No, like uh. So, or, uh. so yeah. So, <laughs> so Mark Andreessen, I think it was like maybe a week ago, it wasn't even that long ago, got some really bad press because I think wherever his house is, somewhere in Silicon Valley, in one of these neighborhoods, there he's he somehow pu- he's pushing back the development of multifamily homes, essentially mm-hmm. apartments, mm-hmm. right? So he's saying no, I don't want apartments in my in our neighborhood because you know he wants it exclusive and all that stuff. So so it's sort of it, the the headline sort of poking fun at the fact that okay here's this guy who's a NIMBY that doesn't want development happening. Where his house is, mm. but, but he just invested three hundred and fifty million, right, to so, solve the housing crisis, right, somewhere else, somewhere else, <laughs> but NIMBY. in your backyard, but NIMBY, not in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> someone well, I, else's, I mean, right, and that's only part of the the story, I guess. Like the biggest news right. is the fact that three hundred and fifty million dollars. The company's called Flow. Uh huh. Uh, Newman's new startup. That's got to be the biggest check ever written by Andrews and Horowitz to a single startup. Certainly, as, yeah. And I mean, we're talking, if it's it, probably the Series A. Yeah. It's probably worth over a billion dollars already. <laughs> wow. And so, I mean, it, it's obviously <laughs> controversial, right? Given the, the WeWork situation, that whole thing. Yes. I mean, I, I know he's. He still walked away with like a billion dollars or something like yes. that, but a lot of people walked away with nothing essentially, right? right? right. The company went from over forty billion dollars down to about four. Down to four, yeah. yeah, which is insane, right? But um, I don't know anything about it. I don't think anybody does. Like, does he have a product? Is does he have a platform? What stage is he in, right? But He's going to sell home know. memberships. <laughs> oh, like we work. work. <laughs> that was his initial idea, wasn't it? Like yeah, some pretty, kind of like yeah. crazy community style living. Yeah. And there's been a handful like that. Yeah. There's been a handful of ones that are like, and it's kind of interesting. It's like you, it's like an apartment building type thing. Mm-hmm. Smallish, like maybe 20 apartments, but they have like community events and like an open space. They can hang out. Sort of like a college dorm. Mm. I sort of think of it that way. It's like, you know, you're going to have a room, but you're going to have, you know, you got to go down the hall to take a shower. <laughs> and it's going to be, you know, something like that. I think that's what they're kind of leaning towards, which is great for younger people, right? Um, and part of the problem, um, you know, that whole NIMBY thing, we deal with that uh, where I live down in the South Bay. You know, California has a thing called the um, the housing element, and it's a it's a state mandate to create more housing um, every year. And so, they basically give cities a quota, and they say based on the size you're at, based at the rate you're growing, you need to build this number of homes, or for this many people. And I say you can do it any way you want. You can build a high-rise apartment complex. You can do smaller things, whatever, whatever you'd want to do, you do, but you have to meet this quota, um, or at least be working towards it. Um, and a lot of neighborhoods, not just in LA, but all over Northern California, same thing, fight that. Cause they're like, well, that's mm. state control over my, you know, over the city. So there's a, there's some pushback, but it ultimately comes down to the fact that, you know, w- California needs to build more housing. I mean, just part of the deal but it's so developed that the only way to really build it is to tear something else down mm-hmm. and build up yeah um so there's there's tension there because people like having 
room and not having high rises. Right. So, but I don't think, but let me say this. I think that's, I'll just say this. I think that's the older generation a little bit. I think a lot of younger people are not as worried about having the big backyard and the big front mm -hmm. yard and the big, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we're more comfortable living in smaller places where there's more community mm -hmm. and a sense of um, more of a lifestyle than just leave me alone. So, well, you're kind of half joking about the subscription thing, but I think we're moving into a world, I think, that's going to be subscription based I your whole so. life. Yeah. And we've, we've been talking about subscription computers yeah. and OSs. I'm waiting to, to, to subscribe, subscribe to, to, to Apple, my Mac. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about it the other day. I'm like, Apple may not do it, but somebody's somebody will. Gonna right. Probably. And why not housing? It. Housing can be a horrible investment. You know. Yeah. I mean, In most major cities, it is. Yeah, it's a it's huge a capital investment. expense. Yeah. Sometimes a depreciating asset. Mm -hmm. So, does it make? And sense? it just requires way too much upfront capital mm -hmm. to get in. Right. Liquid. And so there's just. Right. A million better ways to put that money right. into use. Especially right. here in Southern California. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the median home price is like 550000 mm -hmm. Um, So that's a lot of money. Yeah. And, and if you're a first-time buyer, you better cough up 10 to 20%. Right. And that's where, the, that's where the, the struggle is. So yeah. I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see. But I think, and there was a whole thing too where um, even investment firms, like when housing was going crazy. There was that whole thing with Zillow buying houses. Remember, do you hear about that? Mm. Yeah. They would go out and buy homes based on their Zestimate. So they'd buy up these homes and then they'd turn around and sell them, but they'd increase the asking price by like 20%. And so it would, it would do is they'd sell a couple of these homes in the neighborhood, but it would raise everyone's prices up. And then it would, you know, so they're, they'd get more money eventually. Like they're sort of like, they're sort of like, um, it was like a pump and dump. So yeah, it was crazy. crazy. And they man. were getting, um, some people are really unhappy about it. When, when housing becomes like a game of investment to me, like that's a bad, that's like a, that's a bad signal, mm -hmm. right? People shouldn't necessarily be making tons of money, you know, with a, with a home. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not an investment vehicle. It it's, shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Yeah. But, but I think there's a, that whole theory about homes sort of like back, back in the day, right? Before banks, like before banks were big. Mm -hmm. I mean, I assume you just bought land and then built something yeah. for your family and you just yeah. owned it forever. Right. Mm -hmm. But then banks needed a, an asset to be able to lend money, which is how they make money. Right. And so they said, well, let's build track homes. Mm -hmm. Let's build a really expensive asset and then we'll call it the American dream, mm -hmm. right? To own one of these things. And they started pumping commercials, right? With the housewife and the brand new kitchen. And oh, yeah. So yeah. these things were already built. The American right? dream. Turnkey, right? Yeah. And so, hey, you don't have the money to buy it? Mm -hmm. we'll lend it to you. And then, hey, you can't, you know, you want the payment to be affordable. We'll give it to you for 30 years, you know, 30 mm -hmm. year loan. And so it became, you know, something else. Essentially, the banks are really the ones that benefited from all that. Right. Um, for right. All these years. But to go back to um, A16Z a little bit, um, says here that the flow investment is not the first time they bankrolled Adam Newman. And this is where I was confused because when you told me about this news, I had already known about another one. So apparently this mm. is the second check they've written to Adam Newman. Post WeWork? Or? Yes. Wow. Okay. So in May, um, the crypto division, so you know they have the, the crypto division at, 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 A16Z. at A16Z. Yeah. They, um, they let a $70 million round for Flow Carbon, which bills itself as a Web3 project that offers a token and the token is called Goddess Nature Token. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Dude, yeah. <laughs> this is what's going to happen, bro. Is we're all going to be, our oh homes are going to, like, it's going to be an NFT. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
You're not going to have a, a title no, you're to your not house. Have, you're gonna have it's, a, it's almost, it's going to be a life where, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have an NFT or whatever, your wallet. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm in Fullerton today, but I might be in uh, Hollywood tomorrow. Right. And I'm just going to go scan a, a room. Yeah. That's shared living or whatever. And I'm, I'll have my, you know, I'll have my bed and whatever amenities I need there. Yep. And then walk away when I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like people aren't going to have like homes. No. <laughs> you know, it's just going to be like smallest footprint I can have. Yeah. I'm just going to go crash for the night, mm -hmm. go hang out, shower, do what I got to do, and then work from wherever I want. Right. Yeah. Well, and oh, you know, man. no, uh, no founder chat would be complete unless we bring up Elon Musk. Okay. Um, speaking of housing, he actually, he's actually living in a, in a small house in Austin. Oh, one of these uh, tiny homes? Yes. Well, sort of, sort of tiny, but the idea is it's a, it's sort of like a prefabricated house. So I've seen these things. Yeah. So they come basically off a truck and you just put it together. So dude, they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. And there's, cause they have a huge housing problem in, in Austin. They can't Something. build them fast enough. Right. No. There's not enough homes for the amount of employees right. that they need at that Giga factory. Right. And so I've seen this, yeah. uh, these homes that, that are manufactured, mm -hmm. that they just, you just line them up. Yeah. Yeah. They're, in, they're affordable. They're quick. Mm -hmm. They're cleaner than building, mm -hmm. you know, a standard home safer. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a win-win. Um, and it's funny because like <laughs> Elon just sort of this guy, I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's a, a big investor in that, in this one company that does it. But it's funny because like he's he's dealing with housing crises right just as a company. So remember they they have that SpaceX place out in Boca Chica, Texas, down by Brownsville. Mm -hmm. So Tesla came or not Tesla, but SpaceX came in and basically tried to buy up the whole town. Said we want all these houses. What do you, what do you want? And but a lot of people weren't budging. Yeah, right? and a lot <laughs> of people weren't taking because they're like, well, we're gonna try to get as much mm -hmm. as we can. Um, but I think in that process, he's like, if I could just, you know, like buy the land and I could put a bunch of houses, you know, and now that there's a gigafactory, Austin, same thing. Like he's going to have to employ thousands of people. Mm -hmm. um, and not everyone wants to commute from Austin to this place. It's, no. it's a little ways out, you know, if he can manage this, he can just build his own little city. His only a little Tesla town. <laughs> I don't see why not, you know. So anyway, it's and really I think kind there's of, plenty of young people willing to work at Tesla that would do and that live in one of these little homes. Absolutely. And then, you know, because the access to where all the cool stuff is, is not cr crazy far away. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's going to be plenty of you can go there on the so, weekends. You know, and, yeah. you have a great social life outside of just where you sleep and hang out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's not like, you know, like now, like our generation, we still like to hang out in their homes and hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. And the younger generation likes to be out, sure, you know, out and about right. most of the time. And Austin has that vibe too, right? Where people are always out and bars and coffee shops and working at, you know, the, you know anywhere. So oh, yeah. I don't think having a home is a desire for a lot of these people. And they're definitely not looking at it like, oh, I got to invest in a home. I think that's an old mentality. Right. Well, they're feeling it, too, because, I mean, like we're saying, like the, the, the key to home ownership is to get in early mm -hmm. because you have to sort of leverage the asset to buy the next asset to buy the next. If you if you start early, you're sort of in a better spot. But a lot of these people, like I said, in Austin, I'm sure, I think that standard home price is probably near what it is here. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. probably yeah. 500,000 or more. For Austin? Yeah, because I have I have friends mm. that bought in the Bay Area. Fifteen to twenty years ago, mm -hmm. when we were there, mm -hmm. and even at the time it seemed high, but they, I mean, they, they, a lot of them won, you know. Yeah. And they're or they're winning right. right now, right? Because they're just sitting on so much equity. Yeah, it's gone up big time. I remember when I used to live in Austin, and there's this area just south of downtown, um, and was kind of a real hippieville you know small little homes from like the 50s 60s and i remember looking at you know at the time kind of looking at buying one or something and i talked to some people and i think the house i looked at was like three hundred thousand at the time 
This is 2004. And I remember being like, 300? That's ridiculous for that? I thought that was nuts. I guarantee you right now that house goes over for over a million right now. Easily. Easily. I believe it. And probably they'll just tear it down, you know, mm -hmm. and build something else. Um, so it's just, it's crazy. And so it's, I'm sure that the conversation's going on in Austin too, because they're like, it's a bunch of young, you know, college graduates that are, that are there who can't now for afford a home, you know? So anyway, welcome to the struggle of, yeah, <laughs> hopefully Adam Newman will solve this problem yeah, for all of us. Adam come through, man. And uh, hook up, hook us up with some goddess tokens. <laughs> Put us on that blockchain. Yeah, get us the home N NFT. The home NFT token. <laughs> get in early. <laughs> the we work. That's right. The we live. The we live. <laughs> so we can we live and we work. Instead of we, now it's gonna be called you. Or me live, you work, we work, <laughs> we work, you live. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Later guys. All right, thanks everyone. Bye. <laughs> me me live and we work. <laughs>